and sirs, Ronald Ray here, your boy with a cornbread accent, welcoming you to this week's AEW Dynamite Recap Show. Appreciate you guys checking me out. Uh, hey, those fans at the TD Garden Center got treated with a War Games match. I mean, Blood and Guts match. Please don't uh, copyright that or sue me or however it goes. Uh, speaking of treats, uh, would be a treat if you hit that subscribe button, tap on that like button, Hit that notification bar. I think I got everything. Oh, leave a comment. Uh, and I think I call it the TD Garden uh, in Boston, Massachusetts. I thought I seen TD Garden. It almost sounded like uh, Excalibur call, kept calling it the TD Garden. Uh, or was it, is it supposed to be TB Garden as in the Boston Garden? Because that's the arena. I'm, I'm sorry to be. I'm not up to date on my arenas. So please... In the comments, correct me where I messed up there. Otherwise, let's let her rip. All right, now we're set for our first match. It is for the FTW Heavyweight Championship of the World. Uh, it's Jungle Boy Jack Perry challenging Hook, the champion. Um, of course, the FTW was uh, Taz, who's the father of Hook, uh, championship. He kind of made up for himself during him and the Shane Douglas view, so he figured, you know, there's got to be some kind of world champion. He can't have that one, so he just made one of the own, uh, made one up of his own, and he called it the FTW champion, which, of course, stands for F the world. Um, anyway, uh, Jack Perry's music would hit, but he did come out. All of a sudden, we see a uh, little video screen of him burying his Jungle Boy gear, and then Beethoven's Fifth Symphony plays along, and out Jungle Boy, or Jack Perry comes, I guess, now we can call him, uh, let's see, the Hollywood Jack Wagon Jack Perry, I don't know how YouTube would uh, like it for me to call him the Hollywood Jack Off, but um, I guess Jack Wagon, that, that might work. Um, Unless I can use Hollywood jerk off or jack off, I'll do that. We'll find out soon. Anyway, he comes out, got some new gear, new black britches, uh, man bun, uh, black boots, all, all, all the, uh, all the things you want to do to shed a, shed a, one, one skin up and go into a, another phase in your career. So, gotta give. Him, you know, credit for that at least. Anyway, Hook comes out. Uh, he's kind of guys back towards Jack Perry. Jack Perry tries to get the jump on him, but Hook moves out of the way. A few body shots. They take it out of the ring. Um, Hook has the advantage until uh, Jack Perry uses the deadly wreck of the eyes and a middle rope drop kick to get the advantage. Hook will try and come back. They had a little fight on the apron. Um, and Hook wind up uh, countering a German suplex and turning around to a, a T-bone suplex uh, from the apron to the floor. That didn't look too, uh, that didn't look too pleasant at all. Uh, but, you know, Jack Perry would answer with a DDT onto the floor. Uh, Perry... Or Hook will actually uh, beat the 10 count. No sales of German suplex. Scores multiple German suplex. Uh, we get a ref, ref bump. Perry nails Hook with the FTW belt. Scores a pinfall. So now your new FTW champion is the Hollywood Jack Wagon, Jack Perry. Uh, Taz didn't like this at all, you know, because, hey, dude cheated. So I think, you know, good, um, I guess, performance on uh, Taz's part. But, you know, he didn't really jump in or anything like that. He's like, look, you know, I know my kid, once he gets his wits, wits about him, he's going to go right back after him. So good, uh, good play on there. Um, nothing wrong with that. Uh, other than that, next. All right, we get the another Adam Cole MJF skit. 
Uh, apparently, in, or Adam Cole wants MJF to face his fear, and MJF has a fear of spicy food and poor people. Uh, so they go to a Japanese or Chinese place. They get some spicy food. Uh, then, like, look like Adam Cole could handle it. Uh, MJF t- kept, t- you know, telling a story how in front of 95,000 people at the Saskatchewan Dome in Canada, he slammed Big Bill. <laughs> Cole's like, there weren't that many people there. Um, and it wasn't a dome. He was there, blah, blah, blah. Pretty, yeah, a little bit of funny stuff. Uh, anyway, they actually did get to close on the waiter afterwards. So, next. Alright, now we get the princess or the queen of uh, AEW, Britt Baker. And she goes against Kayla Sparks. Kayla Sparks, uh, the uh, female boss of the Boston chapter of the Ham and Egger World Order. Uh, kind of looks like a Ham and Egger version of Sonya Deville. Doesn't matter. Uh, Britt Baker throws her around a little bit, slaps on that lock jaw, and gets a tap out win. Next. Next up, we get the finals of the Blind Eliminator Tag Team Tournament. Uh, we get Daniel Garcia, Sammy Guevara, who are really not that much strangers to each other, taking on MJF, Adam Cole, better than you, baby, uh, before the match, you know, got even introduced there was a little backstage interview mjf got him and cole so, some matching tights cole got matching jackets and got a mashup version of their entrance songs together so uh like i said you know how it's going in but it's i gotta admit it's a little entertaining it makes me laugh uh jericho would come out join the commentary then beginning of the match we get a Dance off between the teams. Um, yeah, it is what it is. It's uh, kind of like I mentioned before. It's like a, or uh, someone. Um, <clears throat> Jim Cornette did a shooting review one time. Sorry to digress. And he kind of, not exact words, he was kind of like, hey, if it, you know, if it can get over on a spot show at a, the county fair, it could get over on, you know, Monday night to miss out the arena in Memphis, Tennessee, or Madison Square Garden, right? So, that's kind of like my attitude towards this uh, little dance-off. I've been to independent shows in Georgia where, you know, uh, two groups of people or two people have a little dance-off. It's funny. It's entertaining. We can move on. Uh, We get the classic... Babyface ping pong spot with Garcia getting, you know, thumbs or fingers to the eyes by MJF and Man and Cole. Also, uh, you know, couple couple slugs to the face as well. Uh, Daniel and Sammy would take over with a pitcher and pitcher in heat here after uh, they burnt some uh, Adam Cole and uh, Garcia just nailing him in the back. Um, <clears throat> we get the old Sting spot uh, where, you know, Sting would, you know, they would bump each other. Uh, Sting's opponent would lay there, spread eagle. He would, you know, wobble around and fall head first into uh, his opponent's crotch. Yeah, this is what MJF did. Uh, after that, he got the hot tag Ricky Morton style. Uh, and after failing multiple attempts at Hit the double clothesline. Uh, they were finally able to hit the double clothesline. One, two, three. Better than you, Bebe. Adam Cole and MJF are your new number one contenders and will face FTR. I think it's July 29th on Collision. Uh, <clears throat> Jericho came out from, you know, waited on the rampway to kind of consult his guys, uh, Daniel and Sammy, but. They kind of walk past him. I guess nobody's too happy that he might be joining up with Don Callis. Uh, the referee grabbed the bell, of course, and uh, Adam Cole told the referee, I'll hand it to MJF. And Adam Cole took a 
long stare at it, and this didn't sit well with a MJF. A uh, little bit of shove there, say, hey, let's let's win the title. Say, not about that. Uh, like I say, you know what's going to happen. So now that seed's there. Sorry, we all know it's going to happen. Uh, after that, FTR made it to the ring and kind of did a little face off. Uh, no promo, just got in their face and uh, said a few things that, I mean, Mike went there, so they probably just asked him, you know, hey, you want to go to Waffle House later? Uh, or Chinese later? Uh, <clears throat> and do they even have Waffle House in uh, Boston? Maybe they went for clam chowder. I wish I had, what was it, like a uh, crab cake? I don't, I forgot. Uh, they was talking about food on some podcast that was, very popular in Boston. Anyway, uh, that was the end of this segment. Next. Okay, now, <clears throat> excuse me, folks. Uh, yes, now it's time for your main event, the Blood and Guts match. It is the Blackpool Combat Club versus the Golden Elite. Um, <clears throat> and by the way, for any of you who want to know, the very first War Games match, Match Beyond, took place at the Great American Bash in 1987 at the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. If you have, I'm probably watching the network now, but the VHS uh, uh, <clears throat> video of the Great American Bash had Tony Schiavone uh, doing commentary. So, yes, he's seen many War Games uh, or Blood and Guts. Uh, he did make a little bit of reference to that. Anyway, back to the match. Claudio and Casanoli and Kenny Omega started things off. Some back and forth stuff. Uh, Omega got, a little like Omega had a little knot. I can't remember. I guess the side of his head. Uh, but nothing ever, you know, I thought it might have been one of those kind of knots that you probably do then wait till somebody come in and kind of, in other words, a hard way, but that never did uh, come to fruition. Uh, if I even announced that right. Anyway, uh, that bastard pot, he comes in the ring. Now it's 2 1 advantage for the BCC. Uh, then comes Ryan Stone Cowboy Adam Page for the first comeback of the match. And that's kind of what happens in the war games, in case you didn't know. Uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you do know. It's you know, basically a bunch of come, you know, a little bit of heat, a bunch of comebacks. Uh, basically any other AEW match. Um, anyway, Ryan come Cowboy comes in, gets a first comeback. Then John Moxley comes out. He's got screwdrivers and forks. And, you know, at first I was like, wow. You know, maybe John Moxley's not going to be the first one bleeding in this match. But noticeably, yeah, he became the first one. Uh, as far as any blood, there was, you know, uh, later on, you do see uh, a bed of nails. Uh, anyway, more on that later. Uh, speaking of pulling out stuff, you got a bag of broken glass. Uh, Nick Jackson comes out, even things out. Uh, he gets all his shit in, hits a hurricanrana hur on Claudio, causing him to land on the broken glass. Uh, no. Uh, uh, Nick would pay for it though. He winds up, you know, getting the back full of uh, broken glass. Wheeler, Wheeler Yuta comes out. Some more pitcher and pitcher and heat. Then Matt Jackson comes in. Um, this is probably the portion where I do finally notice Moxley is bleeding. Uh, I think if anybody else, I'm talking about the nose with blood on the head, I'm pretty sure they all got the wounds from the broken glass and whatnot. Um, then Kansuki Takeshita comes in, uh, nails Paige with a chair. Uh, he double German suplex the young buckaroos. Uh, now, you know, Monsu pulls out this, you know, basically a bed of nails. Uh, last comeback was Kota Ibushi. He comes out. Wheeler goes after him. He gets knocked out. Bougie comes in, knocks a couple more people out. Monks, you know, hey, bring it on as he's standing on 
uh, Kenny Omega's hand on the bed of nails. Uh, <clears throat> now we got the full Blood of Guts match. It's in full swing now. A uh, bunch of spots here. You got some cool stuff. You had uh, Ibushi slamming Mox on the bed of nails, then use a standing moonsault. Uh, that didn't look too pleasant. Uh, Wheeler Yuta, Matt Jackson went up on top of the cage. Uh, Jackson with a you know uh, a barrage of Northern Light suplexes, but Yuta you know counters with a DDT. He says had enough of this. Speaking of Matt Jackson, I didn't notice it. I guess there was a bag full of thumbtacks, so a lot of people got you know back or a back full of thumbtacks. Um, but towards the end of the match, though, uh, things kind of fell apart for the BCC. Uh, they had Omega in the corner. They all, you know, doing a, their clotheslines and kicks and whatnot. However, Omega moved when Pac came in, and I guess Claudio didn't notice that, and Claudio nailed Pac with a form. Pac didn't appreciate it. Flipped them off, said, look, I'm done. Uh, he gets the bolt cutters. He leaves the ring. Um, we had a little stand, you know, before that we had a standoff. Um, <clears throat> now, you know, we got, you know, four, uh, five on four now. Golden Elite's looking good. Uh, we get uh, handcuffed, or John Mosley gets handcuffed. Uh, Claudio, don't know where he is. They kind of singled out Wheeler Yuta. Uh, Don Callis comes to the ringside and tells Takshida to leave, so he leaves. Uh, the Elite bus opens Wheeler, hits the thigh slap of doom. In other words, the BTE, the BTE effect uh, or trigger. Uh, they chug him out with a chain, and that's it. Uh, end of the match. Uh, the Golden Elite wins. And, you know, when I was watching this, I was like, okay, I guess he passed out and the referee called it. But we hear Chono Shivani, and I got the quotes right here. Uh, and, and Moxley was tied up, so Wheeler had virtually no help at all. Moxley surrendered to save Yuta, is what we've been told, replied Tony Shivani. How come we didn't see that on camera? <laughs> As if, you know, g gore, it was what it was. It's going to be hardcore. You're going to have a bunch of furniture. You're going to have had no problem, none of that. It's just the simple little production. You should have had a hard cam or a camera right there, you know, with Wheeler Yuta, you know, passing out. He wasn't going to give up. And then John Moxley's like, you know, okay, 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 just to save him. We're good. Uh, let's call it. <laughs> call it a day. But we didn't get that. We just hear, oh, we hear that Monsley just made a surrender. We couldn't notice. I think there was a little replay, I think, I, I, I seen. And uh, just John Monsley sit there just did that nonchalantly. You know, it's like, okay, what? Um, Monsley should know better. Everybody in that match should know better. Whoever produced this should have knew better <laughs> and knew that, hey, you need to get this shot, that shot. That's, you know, sorry, you do you look indie doing that. So I uh, just going to point that out. That's, of course, my opinion. Uh, other than that, you know, uh, it's basically wrapped around, you know, uh, the soul shows wrapped around the blind eliminator tag, Adam Cole, MJF stuff, and this. Blood and Guts War Games match. Uh, obviously, you know, they can't call it War Games because uh, WWE, WWE owns it um, or Endeavor, uh, the parent company of WWE now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like I said, that's my only biggest gripe is like, okay, I, I would have bought that. Hey, he passed out, referee called it. Uh, <clears throat> but they're going to do that where. Uh, Monsley called it to save 
you know, you should have seen it right there, not we here, you know. That's what we're told that Mike's leader Snashaw, we you know, called it and to save Utah, but I guess that would all be explained next week. Whatever. It is what it is. Um, like I said, my opinion, I would have done it a little differently, but that's why I get to talk about it. That's why we're all fans. We all have our own opinions. Speaking of opinions, I'd like to know you guys' opinions. What did you think of the uh, Blood and Guts match, the whole show, uh, even the angle with Adam Cole and MJF? Uh, we all, I, I feel we all know where that's going to. Um, or anything, since we're this is a you know technically the Dynamite recap, anything AEW, let's talk about it right here in the comments. I'll do my best to answer <laughs> and respond because obviously I like talking about this shit. Um, I love pro wrestling. Uh, didn't mean to call it shit, but uh, I didn't mean shit in a negative way. I made a positive way. Um, yeah, I've been watching this a long time. Um, anyway, yes, I babble because I don't know how to end a show or end one of these, whatever you want to call it, shows, recaps. Um, stream whatever um, stream and segments anyway I'll shut up now uh, bid, everybody, bid everyone a uh, good day have a good one catch you later see you later ciao we here at RP Tube Vision would like to thank you for tuning in don't forget to like subscribe and share also check out Friends of the Show Echo Life and Natural for home-crafted candles, hand cloth, and other home and personal goods. Look them up on Facebook. Link will be available below the video. That is Echo Life and Natural.